Kamusta kapatid? Today, let me give you a general rule on runes and artifacts made by Prax. Please consider subscribing to my channel so you don't miss any of my videos. I want to introduce you guys to a general rune guide and a general artifact guide made by Prax. But before that, I want to play my Dimensional Rift first. And this time, I'm going to try to play level 7 for the first time. Let's go. I don't really like this game, but I only do it for the artifact. Man, that's not fun. That's not fun at all. Let's get that chest. What? Who do I give this to, guys? Who do I fucking give this to? So comment down below, who do you think I give that artifact to? So now, let's see the general rune guide made by Prax. So general rule, actually, you would only want divine options on onslaught runes because this is mostly what everyone needs. The general rune that everyone uses are onslaught and life. You only try to make divines out of onslaught unless you have everyone perfect divines. That's where you can try doing divines on life runes or penetration runes for Sander. So for onslaught divine runes, the best ones to get are Might of Desperation. Of course, that's the best. Second is Potential. Next is Survival Will. Survival Will, I'm not sure who you give Survival Will to. And mostly Grim Rippers for those who has damage over time. Say Carmen, Benzel, Saul, but best is Might of Desperation. So there is a note here. Can have one penetration subset for most dealers. Sander can have two penetration stats. Crits are generally bad, especially for damage over time heroes. Support like Lulu benefits from having 20 speed. Yes, that is correct. Onslaught plus attacks on supports to pair with Emblem. Alright, so for life runes, Might of Desperation is always the best. Next is Potential. Survival Will, yeah, maybe for Rochelle, whatever. And Reincarnation is good as well for life runes. So there's a note here. First, four substat are not fixed. So tanks like Zagraco benefits from having high speed and high CC resistance. Okay, disclaimer. Certain rune builds differ in situations and chapter progression, not necessarily for endgame players. Alright, okay, for reincarnation runes, this can be used by Luke or Solina. So they're the best users for reincarnation runes. Settle with purple substat early on to save resources. Okay, if you rolled an undesired divine rune, build another rune to roll divide, divine on. Because divine runes are somewhat usable for other characters as well. Regeneration of life is generally bad. Reroll if needed, but you can temporarily put on secondary, tertiary tanks on your team. So regeneration of life is probably the worst divine rune you can ever get. Alright, and now let's talk about the general artifact guide. Disclaimer, for legendary artifacts, if you get those mentioned below, you can use them on those heroes but it doesn't mean they are the best in slot all the time. Endgame players use different builds according to enemy composition. Alright, if you guys want to see the information, go to your support, go to your craft, and go to your guide. And here we can see all the artifacts. So now, let's proceed to Golden Dagger. When attacking tankers, attack increased by 20%. That's huge. And that artifact is mainly used on Lilith and Sander. But it's up to you. Next is the Macabre Rose. So this is Macabre Rose. At the start of every two rounds, attack is increased by 7%. Up to 3 times, 7, 14, 21%. Attack increases up to 21%. So if you have that, that is best for Carmen, Benzel, or even Ken. Now for tanks, the one that Taros and Bakro uses, Necklace of Protection. If you're attacked 3 times in 1 round, you will receive a shield with 20% your maximum HP for 1 turn. That is amazing. For support tanks, especially Rochelle, we use this artifact called White Blessed Narcissus. While you're alive, increase physical resistance of adjacent allies, including yourself, by 15%. So everyone besides Rochelle will get 15% physical resistance boost. That's amazing. And now, for healers, one that Solina, Fiona, and Odelia uses is called Forgotten Flask of Restoration. Now, direct healing by active skill increases by 10% and increases by an additional 8% every time one ally dies. Stacks up to 3 times. Wow. Now, next is the one for Almond. Solina and Fiona. And this is called Necklace of Dawn. If an active healing skill lands with a critical strike, an extra shield 22% healed will be created for one turn. This is amazing. And now, for all supports, we use this 
At the start of every combat, transfer 15% of your attack to ally with the highest attack among all the allies, which is very helpful. Your attacks will be transferred to your highest attacker. And now, Goblet of Wrath is generally good for anyone. Now, if you don't have your best specific artifact for a hero, you may also use Goblet of Wrath. Use only 80% energy when using active skill. This is very helpful. And now for legendaries, we see here Spear of the Monster Hunter for Lilith. Spear of the Monster Hunter. When attacking two or more enemies simultaneously, the damage dealt to one random target will increase by 40%. That's amazing. I wish I have that. Okay, so Crown of Fire can be applied to anyone. On normal attacks, apply burn damage over time of 50% to one random target for two turns. Now, Demonic Ring, the one that I just got, is best for Milia because attack decreases by 10% but critical damage increases by 50%. Now, Geist Vambris. So, Geist Vambris is best for Rochelle. At the beginning of every round, a shield with 20% of your max HP is applied to an ally with the lowest HP, excluding yourself for one turn. Next is Steel Beast's Bone for Abala. Steel Beast Bone is when your HP is below 40%, Attack increases by 40%. I think that's very helpful in Cave for Abala. Next is Book of Forbidden Knowledge for Zagraco. Oh, book. It looks like a shield. Okay, Book of Forbidden Knowledge for Zagraco. Every time you CC an enemy, you'll recover energy by 40%. Oh, wow. So if you have this, you can non-stop stun enemies. Okay, Crystal of Eternal Healing for Solina and Golden Earrings for Solina. So where is that? Golden Earrings for Selene. Whenever you remove an ally CC or debuff, you gain 40. Wow. And Crystal Eternal Healing. When healing two or more allies simultaneously using active skill, one of them will receive healing over time equals to 50% attack for two turns. Yeah, this is crazy. Uh, I wish I have all these. All right. Next is Rider's Horn for Lulu. Your attack reduced by 10%, but attack of allies in the same row will increase by 20% of the start of combat. Best when Lilith is on the same row. Okay, Essence of Burning Flame. Essence of Burning Flame to anyone. Okay, accuracy and penetration rate of all allies increased by 20%. I have that and I use that on Lulu because I use Lulu all the time. Okay, Book of Forbidden Knowledge for Adora. Book of Forbidden Knowledge also for Adora. So same with Zagraco. Now, there are other artifacts here that we haven't tackled. I don't think if anyone already got a mythic artifact at this point, if there's anyone, that's probably Black Husk or other goddamn Leviathans out there. Now, the ones that we didn't tackle is Sword of the Monster Hunter. Okay, Grip of Hell. If an active skill attacks Grit, there's a 50% of reducing enemies' energy by 50%. I think this is best for Noel. Next is Shield of Guardian. Increase damage taken from tankers by 20%. Reduce damage taken from dealers. This is good for all tankers. This one. Soul Sand. Obtain 40 energy when an ally dies. Next is Dragonhide Shield. Increase the crit resistance of all adjacent allies, including yourself, by 30%. Relentless Knight's Helmet. When attacked, have 40% chance of reducing enemy energy by 20%. Cursed Sword. On normal attacks, apply 10% attack reduction debuff. Yeah. Maze of Punishment. Attack increased by 35% at the beginning of combat. This effect decreases 5% every each round. Alright. Guardian of the Sage. When healing one person using active skill, a 20% damage reduction buff is added to that ally for two turns. So there you have it. For now, we're not going to be talking about mythical artifact because this is too unrealistic to get. Because if you want to get them, these are your craft materials. Almost impossible. Almost impossible. Once again, huge shout out to Prax for those amazing illustrators. And that's probably the most important general info for runes and artifact that we can get. So if you guys want to learn more about this game, please check my other videos. If you guys have other video suggestions, please comment down below. Marami salamat for watching and have an amazing rest of your day. See you guys on the next one.